This video is brought to you by the Local Projects print publication. Head to the description of this video to subscribe now and receive three copies each year. I'm Ollie Booth of Ollie Booth Architecture and I'm the lead designer in this project. The project is located in central Auckland. It's a typical urban setting that's experiencing more intensification and this is an example of infill housing uh, on the back of someone's backyard essentially. The surrounding context is typically bungalows and villas the project here we decided to react to this and rather than occupying the centre of the site we decided to push the built forms to the outer perimeter. Uh, this allowed us to make the most of a small 280 square metre site and establish a central courtyard garden in the, in the middle. Part of the challenge was could we create a sense of refuge in the middle of the city? The garden and landscape provides an important role in blending this home into its wider context and environment. The scale of the project was influenced by the budget, so we managed this by keeping the footprint of the house to a considered and efficient size. The feeling of retreat and seclusion was really important to us both, and it was how could we manage this in a very urban environment. So the initial moves for the house was to install these large precast uh, fluted concrete walls and what they did was uh, put our backs to the sun but provided us this intimacy and privacy from the wider context around us. We spent a lot of time and experimentation with the external flutes which provide the sort of verticality and, and sculpted interplay across the front elevations. The use of fabric rolls was our initial design driver, so we tested that many, many times and in the end came to a result whereby we had this quite consistent rhythm and verticality, but then when released from that, we have this fractured edge and as the light hits and interacts with the panel throughout the day, we get this lovely inconsistency. We've tried to keep the house as clean and refined, but some of the happy accidents that have happened along the way were sort of the bullet holes that are a result of the, the structural integration of the two concrete panels for the upper and lower floors. And they're sort of a timely reminder of methodologies and construction, and it just have, provides a lovely softness. Light and shadow has sort of been the the central focus of, of this design and it provides a constant changing palette throughout the day. Uh, the installation of a light scoop in the ceiling is a 4.2 metre long slot and it really captures the arc of the sun throughout the day. We wanted to see how we could introduce light in its smallest form but maximise that. So the flare was introduced to allow sunlight as it rakes throughout the day to penetrate deeper into the spaces and reflect off the tile surface. A small light scoop was installed at the front door as our entrance mat and this allowed us to draw light through into the lower levels and it's a, a lovely sense of intrigue whether people decide to jump that or walk over it. The, the house is cut into the landscape so from the approach the house appears as a single level. Um, it was an intentional move, but it also allows us to create separation of spaces where the upper focuses on the sort of expansive, wider context, and then the lower, a more intimate uh, setting in the native trees. Making your way downstairs, the staircase hugs the internal corner of the home, and as you descend below, the temperature changes as the thermal moderation of the concrete panels provides this consistency throughout the day and also throughout the seasons. It's a really lovely balance between the warmth above and also the, the bedroom spaces below. In the early morning, light filters into the lower level bedrooms, which is a really lovely dappled light. 
it uh, forms a, a lovely interplay against the, the warm linings and then also the, the wider environment outside. The implementation of, of thick walls allowed us to start to occupy both sides of these spaces. So in bedrooms it became bookshelves and curtain recesses, whereas in the bathroom we could create nooks for things like towel rails to help create a, a greater sense of space. I guess operability was an important aspect in terms of entertaining. So the house needed to react to not only the conditions uh, and weather, but also the amount of people that are using the space. The, the corner of the building opens and is cantilevered um, to provide the feeling of an outdoor room. The existing vegetation on site formed a natural buffer and starting point for the house. In order to site it correctly, we had to then cut down to a lower level to create our, our downstairs bedroom spaces, but it then allowed the upper floor and living to sort of sit within the canopies of the trees. As intensity becomes more important in our urban environments, we tried with this house to sort of show how small can still be beautiful and expansive and generous. So we wanted to intentionally keep that considered in every way and form. You don't necessarily need to have these large sites to create these feelings and by considered layouts in terms of where you site these on your site gives you opportunities to create more generous outdoor spaces and living environments which you might not normally get with typical villas and bungalows in the area. Published three times a year, the local project hard copy publication contains over 350 pages of curated insight into the latest architecture and design across Australia and New Zealand. Printed on exceptionally high quality paper stock, the publication is designed to be read and enjoyed over time. A beautiful and valuable addition to any personal library or coffee table. With worldwide delivery available, have the hard copy print publication delivered straight to your door three times a year with an annual subscription. Head to the description of this video to subscribe to the triannual print publication.